the, the problem with Bitcoin is you've tokenized nothing, right? So at least with gold, you tokenize something. Uh, you know, Bitcoin can't work. I mean, yes, as long as there are people foolish enough to buy it, you know, the price can go up. In today's video, Peter Schiff, founder, CEO and global strategist of Euro-Pacific Capital gives a warning that the 2008 crisis was just the prelude to a larger sovereign debt crisis in the United States that may lead to a collapse of the US dollar. If you got to a point where maybe gold could be tokenized through some sort of technology where you had a reserve against it, a digital gold dollar, so to speak, which may happen with China and Russia at some point, they've been accumulating a lot of gold, would you be for that or against that? Deregulation is the low-hanging fruit because that doesn't cost the government any money. They mm -hmm. can repeal all sorts of regulations that are undermining our productivity. So that's the easy thing to do. Uh, but of course, that's still difficult politically because, you know, there's a whole class that benefits from that regulation, right. including all the people who are employed <laughs> as regulators, right? And all the lawyers and accountants that make a lot of money off of all this unnecessary regulation, which is one of the reasons that we've outsourced so much of our industry to the rest of the world to avoid the costs of complying with all that regulation. And the regulation completely destroyed the banking system. We would have a much sounder banking system if it was regulated by the free market instead of by the government. But in answer to your question about gold-backed currencies, we have the technology to do that right now. I mean, that's yeah. existing. The biggest, mm -hmm. the biggest impediment is government regulation anti-money laundering, security regulation, all these government rules and regulations act as a barrier to entry because the government doesn't want competition with money. They want to maintain their monopoly on money and their product stinks. It's fiat currency, it's backed by nothing, it's no good. The free market's alternative would be gold, which works great. And now with the internet and blockchain, it works better before because it's very easy to tokenize gold and then have those tokens uh, uh, available to the public to use as a medium of exchange, as a unit of account, as a store of value, as money that would be much more efficient in every single sense of the word than dollars or euros or yen. And so that's exactly where we should be going. And, you know, I would applaud that. In fact, I'm going to be working to make that happen, uh, you know, to the extent that governments don't prevent it because they yeah. might. I mean, they could use their power and they have all the guns, right? They have to, to stop the competition, to preserve their monopoly and their ability to flood the world with their lousy fiat uh, currencies. Institutional adoption, you think now is over. So you're you're thinking Bitcoin is, institutional adoption is gone. Bitcoin is on its way down. Is that the only reason? Do you not feel that globally, the citizens of the world have adopted what's happening within Bitcoin? No, look, the, the problem with Bitcoin is you've tokenized nothing, right? So at least with gold, you tokenize something. Uh, you know, Bitcoin can't work. I mean, yes, as long as there are people foolish enough to buy it, you know, the price could go up. Um, but eventually the people who are buying it are going to want to sell it because they don't want their Bitcoin. They want to buy things. They want to buy a car or a house, take a vacation, buy food. And the farmer doesn't want Bitcoin. You know, the guy that's selling a car doesn't want your Bitcoin. You know, so in order to buy anything with Bitcoin, you got to sell the Bitcoin. Well, now you need somebody else to buy it. Well, if you run out of buyers, uh, then the whole thing implodes, right? That just like any pyramid or chain letter. You know, I, I call it some blockchain letter. It's the same principle as a chain letter. Uh, so it doesn't work. In contrast to gold, right? Gold is a real commodity. There's always a market for gold. At any price, jewelers will buy gold. If gold is $5,000 an ounce, they're going to buy it. The electronic industry needs gold. If it's $5,000 an ounce, they're going to be buying it, right? There's always yeah. going to be buyers for gold. And central banks around the world, if I'm right, they're always going to be accumulating gold. They need gold as a reserve, especially if they move away from the dollar. So you always are going to have uh, demand for gold. It's been, there's been demand for it for 5,000 years. Uh, and, and it's because of its actual properties as a metal that it's so valuable. Bitcoin's only properties is that people think they're going to get rich if they buy it. And they can only get rich if they buy it if there's a greater fool willing to pay a higher price. You know, now, yes, right. this thing has gone on for a decade. You know, it's gone on longer than the, the tulip bubble. So, you know, it's, yeah. it's setting a record in longevity, you know, but uh, you know, it's still going to end in disaster. 
Uh, I, the reason I think that the institutional adoption is over is because, you know, I think that that was big in 2021. They kind of got in at the top. The institutions kind of put their toe in the water mm -hmm. at 40, 50, $60,000 Bitcoin. And they don't like the temperature. You know, even though it's come back to 30,000, they had to ride it down to 16,000. Uh, I think they're gone. And now all the new rules and regulations that are coming on to the space. And I think a lot of these crypto companies are either bankrupt or headed for bankruptcy. I think the bloom is off that rose. I think the institutions that dip their toe in the water are not going to completely go in. They're, they're done. And I think those that didn't put a toe in the water are glad that they didn't. And they're never going to go near there. I think all yeah. of the rally we're seeing now in crypto is coming from the people who have been in crypto the whole time. They're getting excited about uh, what's happening with the Fed, about the financial crisis. And so they've pulled their bit, their, their offers. So they're not really selling. They're, they're putting more money in. And it's a thin market. It's also a highly manipulated market. It's notorious for pump and dump. And I think that's what's going on. I think some of the major players are trying to buy more. A lot of the trades may just be, you know, the whales kind of moving their crypto from wallet to wallet, but they're trying to get the price up because they're hoping that the higher price will attract in some more money. That, you know, it's that momentum and that hype that might get people excited. Um, but I, I think that ship has sailed. I think all the excitement was in 2021. Uh, that was the peak of the bubble. Uh, I just don't think they're going to be able to reignite that. And at some point, this, you know, dead cat balance is going to roll over. And I think uh, Bitcoin is going to plunge at, at the same time that gold is going to be making new highs. I mean, I think gold's broken out. It's taking off. It's about to hit new all-time record highs. It's already hit all-time record highs in, you know, pounds, in euros, in yen, and all these other currencies. We're just a, a few bucks away from an all-time high in the dollar uh, but then there's no resistance to the price of gold, and it's just going to keep on heading higher, especially when people recognize that the days of low inflation are over as if we ever really had them. It was all a lie to begin with, but now they can't even lie about inflation anymore because it's so high. They can't hide it with their rigged uh, CPI indexes, and the world is going to have to reprice gold much higher when it recognizes that inflation is going to be much, much higher than 2% for as far as the eye can see. I'm not saying that blockchain and DeFi and all this has no future. What I'm saying is the cryptocurrencies have no future, at least the ones that are uh, backed by nothing, that are just, you know, digital. Unless well, the U.S. dollar um, is, is so, backed by nothing, you know. Um, well, that's that's, that's a that, big problem with the U.S. dollar. Yeah. That's that's why we're looking for an alternative. Well, it, had so, a, it had a 100-year run, so it did pretty good. So but, far, but it started out backed by gold. That's what gave it its value. You know, Britain Bitcoin didn't start that. out backed by anything. It Absolutely. Just materialized. Yeah. Right. But Go in ahead. order for a good to serve as money before it becomes money, it needs to be a good in and of itself. There has to be some demand and use and need for I, that I object. That, I know that's it can be the modified. thought of the last 500 years, but I don't think that's the thought of the next 500 years. And well, to me, you know, I, that, you know, everybody always thinks this time is different. They think that they well, it's not this time. Something. This is the first time. There's no been no, no, it's no not time the first before. Time. Well, this is well, not what this is not time? the first pyramid or the first Ponzi or the first uh, bubble. There have been many of them. But again, I, I don't think that the industry has no future. It's just that the future is going to evolve the tokenization of real things. You know, whether it's gold Very and possible. silver to yes. be money or whether it's other securities to uh, maybe bypass exchanges. So maybe ownership of stocks could be tokenized. Maybe tokenized, real estate yep. could be tokenized. Uh, ownerships of automobiles and, 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 and other things. So there, there certainly could be a lot in the future of Totally of agree with that. I We're just don't think... Page. Right now, you've got thousands of literally like 20,000 worthless fiat cryptocurrencies that have just been conjured into existence that have no actual value or use other than the fact that people buy them to bet that the price goes up. You know, replace what their need is for the U.S. dollar in terms of time. Is that just yeah. well, three years, five years, 10 years? Look, they never really needed the dollar. They needed it like a hole in the head. They put themselves into a position where they needed it, but now they are extricating themselves from that position so that they no longer need it. They never really needed it. 
uh, but they were using it anyway. Uh, but we gave them a, a number of reasons to uh, get out of that position. And yeah. they would be much better off if they held gold as their primary reserve rather than U.S. dollars. And remember, mm -hmm. prior to Bretton Wood, all the countries held gold. That yep. was everybody's yep. reserve. And then when Bretton Wood came around, the reason that everybody decided to hold dollars was because the dollar was backed by gold and convertible into gold at a set ratio. Every $35 got you an ounce of gold. So if you were a foreign central bank and you held $35, you held an ounce of gold, right? So, uh, and we were on that system until 1971. And then the U.S. defaulted on its commitment. And so for 50 years, we've been on this crazy fiat system. And I think it's coming to an end. And I think the world is going to go back to what existed prior to 1971, which is gold being the primary reserve, just without the U.S. dollar as an intermediary. Yeah. And so these countries are going to have gold. And that's much better because gold is not simultaneously somebody else's liability. It's a real asset. Nobody can sanction your gold. Nobody can take your gold away from you, assuming you store it yourself. So if China and Russia have their gold reserves in their country and the Chinese decide to do something that America doesn't like, well, America has no retaliation financially. Exactly. They yeah. can't do, America can't do what it did to Russia and Putin. Uh, and so people want to put themselves in a position where they're not beholden to the whims of American politicians, but also they don't want to have to loan all this money to the U.S. government. They don't want to have yeah. to have these huge trade deficits with the United States when their own citizens uh, would be better off consuming all that stuff themselves.